most of the questions would be about the COVID stuff. So I was trying to think of something different, but just Lucas Niang told us the other day when we spoke with him that, um, that you had reached out to him. Uh, you were one of the first people to reach out to him. You actually did so in French and he had to look it up to make sure that you weren't just messing with him, that you actually spoke French and weren't just messing with him because you knew that he did just, uh, curious how much you're looking forward to working with him, what you know about him and just, uh, you know, is French something you guys are going to plan on speaking quite a bit just to confuse Coach Heck and everybody else in there? <laughs> Maybe not to confuse Coach Heck, but it's for sure something uh, we're going to work on. You know, it's, uh, you know, French is my first language. Or, of course, when I get a chance to talk uh, French, I, I love to do so. And, and I've been speaking French with Ryan Hunter a little bit because he's, uh, you know, he's from Canada and his mother speaks French. And I think it's kind of the same, uh, same situation for him. So it's, it's just good, you know, to, uh, to have a little – a little bit of an inside connection and, and, and uh, you know, I, I was talking to Rick Burkholder and he was like, you know what, the guy we just drafted speak French. And I was like, this is amazing. Give me his number. And I reached out to him in French. Not sure he understood exactly what I meant with my text, but, uh, you know, we'll work on that. All right, let's go to Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. Hey, Larry, I remember from uh, talking with you what, about your medical degree and your choices having to do with that, that when you were at McGill to balance all your studies and so on, you had to sleep in the locker room and wake up, go to practice and such like that. So now you're on the front lines with the COVID stuff and going through this virtual off season. Does it remind you uh, of those times? And how do you think that those times may help you as you're, you're kind of diving right back into this? I mean, you know, I think every healthcare professional, especially medical student, you know, you, you work long hour, uh, especially when you're learning. Uh, and and uh, I remember, you know, back in like 2013, 14, 15, when I was doing both at the same time, it was uh, it was really hectic. But uh, now I think it's a it's a totally different mindset. You know, I'm I'm here more, you know, to help, to support, to contribute in that time of crisis. And uh, and, and you know what, what goes through my mind is more like how can I first protect myself, care for the patient, protect the patient as well. And doing all that while, of course, like trying to assist to as much virtual training as I can and work out on my home back home. Uh, let's go to Matt Derrick. Go ahead, Matt. Hey, doctor. Um, you wrote a little bit about how that you're involved with the committee on advising the NFL and just how to proceed going forward. Just curious, you know, what is your take about how, you know, you feel like that the NFL should proceed? When you think it would be safe for everyone to get back? And, you know, do you think you're going to be able to play a full season? Well, you, you know what, for me, I, I see that more as a privilege to be able to sit on that committee, you know, the task force from the NFLPA. And, and there's many committee that both the NFLPA and the NFL has put in place in order to like kind of evaluate what's going on, you know, and you know, I'm not an expert, you know, I, I'm sitting on that call. There's people from like Stanford, Harvard that study epidemiology and public health. So I, I'm, I'm there to learn and, and maybe give a little bit of my perspective as a player, but uh, I don't want I don't want to comment on what's going to happen. You know, for sure, there, there, there's plenty of scenario right now, plenty of different strategy in place. And, and it's going to be interesting to see how that's going to play out, you know. And, uh, and, and I think that the number one thing is for sure to keep the players safe. But I think the NFL in general has also um, a responsibility towards their, the community and their fans. So making sure that we're not becoming like a vector of propagation for that virus. So, so there's a lot of question. And, and like I said, it's going to be a, Interesting to see how, how that's going to evolve in the next few weeks, months. Uh, all right, let's go to Adam Teicher. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, Larry, I hope you're doing well up there. Um, I wanted to ask you if you can maybe detail in, in brief um, what exactly you're doing there. And, and also, um, how do you justify the, the tremendous personal risk you're taking here um, by, by doing this? Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's... Um, Right, right now, I'm, I'm working, quote unquote, as, a, as an orderly. Um, I, I, it was kind of the easiest status to, to give me because I'm, I'm kind of in a gray zone, you know, uh, having graduated with my doctorate in medicine, but I'm not in a residency program. So it was kind of hard to be like, I jump in as a physician because I, I, I'm not really at, at, at this uh, specific time. So uh, the, the help that the, the healthcare um, department needed was mostly as orderly. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, but I'm doing also a little bit of nurse task, you know, uh, handing out medication, uh, making sure the, the patient are all right. I, I'm working in a, in a long-term care facility right now. So, you know, the, the, the average uh, patient is probably like closer to 80 years old. So it's a totally different mindset. Uh, I haven't really been exposed to a lot of geriatric patients uh, throughout my, my medical 
uh, studies. So, so it's, it's really a different mindset. And, and in that time of crisis, you know, there's just so many uh, extra steps you got to do, you know, uh, in order to protect yourself, but also protect your patients. So, you know, we're, we're wearing like our visor and our mask, like all day long during the whole shift, uh, washing your hands. And, and there's just so many precautionary measures in place in order to protect both you and the patient uh, that it just make everything heavier in terms of task and that's why they need so many people yes there's there's a lot of medical uh professional that have been sick from covid or are in quarantine right now but there's also just more work to do on every floor so that's why they need people and that's why i'm here right now uh, let's go to seren seren go ahead uh larry thank you for the time uh, i appreciate it uh, number one i I'm on, i want to be specific do you fear the virus well, you know personally i mean is there is there genuine fear of it because as adam said you know you are increasing your your uh, potential exposure and then as a follow-up i know you're talking about trying to be involved in all the virtual meetings and everything that the chiefs are doing but uh, obviously to maintain the kind of strength and size you need to play offensive line in the NFL, I would think takes a lot of working out. Are, are you able to actually uh, get the workout in to, to be prepared to play football again? Two different questions, but uh, I'll try to do my best to answer. I mean, um, you, you know, this is, uh, I think everybody's concerned. Everybody's kind of scared a little bit, but, but at the end of the day, you know, I, I got my training for, for proper PPE, uh, measure and usage which is which was really important for me you know just refreshing like how to put the gown how to put a visor how to wash everything and, and you know putting in place kind of a process that makes you feel safe you know and, and for me that process was i have an, an empty apartment in montreal that i use kind of, kind of as a transitional zone so i go back home uh to that apartment it's empty i just uh, throw everything in the washer wash it with special soap take my shower and everything and then go home in order to like try to protect my girlfriend as well, who's, uh, who's back home. And I don't want her to get sick either, you know? So of course there are risks, but at the end of the day, I think you got to look at, you know, from a community standpoint, having you know, like young fit individual working in, at risk and in, in an at risk environment with the best protective gear possible. I think it's the, the best way to, to fight this thing. And that's why I, I want to contribute. And, uh, I don't know what was the other question. Oh yeah. The virtual workout thing, you know, uh, I think it's something I'm used to, you know, doing both. Uh, for the past four years, I've been doing medical school during the off season, working in hospitals with different shifts, different responsibilities. So I, I'm, I'm used to like stay in shape. And, and I think the coach are trusting me and, and I try to be accountable to the team as much as I can. Uh, I actually set up like a pretty nice uh, little gym in my uh, garage. So I, I do the best I can, but you're right. You know, as an offensive lineman, you got to put those those plates on your back and squat in, in order to stay in shape. And with all the gyms closed, it's a little bit of a challenge, but you know, uh, the strength and conditioning staff in Kansas city are doing an amazing job, you know, sending us workout. And uh, I communicate with Barry on a weekly basis, you know, saying, sending him like, what do I have in terms of equipment? And then he's sending me like workout and everything is kind of personalized uh, according to every player's uh, ability to have access to uh, dumbbell rack bars and stuff. And it's a, uh, it's, it's for sure a challenging time, but at the end of the day, I think we're doing an amazing job with that. Uh, okay, Harold Coons, go ahead, Harold. All right, hey, LDT, hope you're doing good, man. Hey, just uh, overall, how hectic has it been for you at the uh, hospital you've been at? And then when did you kind of get the feeling that things were getting a lot more serious than maybe, you know, people have perceived in, in, in media or just what you've seen out there on the front lines? And also, how many players have reached out to you about, you know, what's going on and what they can do? Yeah, I, I mean, uh, crazy enough for me, the first time I, I actually was confronted to the coronavirus was at the Super Bowl when a reporter actually asked me what I thought about it. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm about to go play, you know, the biggest game of my life. And uh, I'm not really focusing on that right now. And, and crazy enough, you know, three months later, the whole like half of the planet is in quarantine and, uh, and, and it's a pandemic. So uh, it, it's crazy how things have evolved over the course of the last few months. And uh and for me, I think, you know, I got back from a trip and, and and when I got back home, I was put in isolation because I was coming from an at-risk area. And then uh, I think it's kind of at that point that I realized that things were really serious. And then you see like the NBA and the NHL shutting down, school closure and all that stuff. So um, for, for me, at that point, I, I reached out to the health ministry and the faculty of medicine at McGill. And I was like, how can I help? You know, how can I be useful? And uh, at the beginning, my job was mostly to kind of like, 
promote all the new measure in place from a public health standpoint in order to make the community as safe as possible, you know, with the social distancing and all that stuff. Uh, but at some point, the, 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 there was like a shortage of people in long-term care facility and, uh, and, and I kind of proposed myself to go work. And, you know, the, of course, you know, it's, it's one thing to be like, I want to go work, but when you actually get the, the date of your first shift and everything, that's kind of when the, everything hits you and you're like, okay, I, how am I going to protect myself? How am I going to, you know, manage that with football and everything? And the Chiefs have been amazing. You know, I reached out to Coach Reed and, and the front office to see, like, are you guys okay with me going to the, the front line? And everybody was really supportive and understand, I think, that um, there, there's something a little bit bigger than football that's happening right now. And if I can contribute, I think I should. Uh, let's go to Greg Eklund. Go ahead, Greg. Oops. Greg, can you hear us? All right. How, okay. how, how are we doing now? We got you now, okay. Greg. All right. Coming off the Super Bowl championship, did that um, uh, put you in a position to reassess where you are with your professional football career and where you want to go with your medical career? How many more years do you want to play professional football? I mean – I don't have the answer to you exactly in terms of how many years. I think that uh, there's some parameter and things that I got to look at from a medical standpoint just to make sure that I can still do my residency training once I'm done football and I don't have to restart everything. It's such a unique case that I don't have like the, the exact answer. Uh, but what I know is that I'm excited to go back to Kansas City and that's why I, I renegotiate my contract in order to make sure I stay there. All right, guys, we've got three more questions on the docket here and then we're going to let Larry go. Uh, Harold, uh, go ahead. Oh, I, I wasn't up. Go ahead. Oh, <laughs> you're not up? Oh, your hand's up. All right, let's go to Adam. Adam, go ahead. Hey, uh, Larry, just really quick, you kind of touched on it a little bit. Just what, what does your daily schedule look like? How are you balancing um, your doctor duties, and how are you balancing the Chiefs' workouts? What, what, is, what is your daily workout, uh, or as far as just when you get up, what are you doing from the hospital and then working with the Chiefs? Uh, you know, I work out schedule with my uh, my online coach go check uh, to make sure that I can uh, uh, be there for as many virtual workouts as possible the work those workouts are four days a week right now so I try to be there for at least two of those and then I try to like do more shift maybe on the weekend and stuff like that I you know it's um, as a medical student the, the day are really really long um, and, and now the day are a little bit shorter you know I wake up around like uh, 5 30 and, and and i'm done around like three o'clock in the afternoon so the day are like shorter and, and but I, I, but it's it's hard to work out you know it takes a lot of discipline to like go back home you know after you take that shower and and, and change into your like fresh clothes and you know you know wearing your your visor and all that stuff and then you know go hit the, the squat rack but I, but i think it's important to do it and uh, and i think those virtual workouts to a certain extent kind of like remind you you know football is just around the corner and yes there's a lot of uncertainty and we don't know exactly what's going to happen but um it's just around the corner and as a professional athlete you got to stay ready so i uh, you know talking with the guys and just stay, staying up to speed watching some film i think it's just like keep me in the loop and, and keep my focus also on training to make sure i can hit the ground running when i get back to kansas city okay let's go to Surin. go ahead Surin. Uh, Larry, the, Coach Reed talked a lot about uh, how he thinks the offense has a lot more potential. And I know even after at the end of the Super Bowl, he was talking about, you know, the, the ideas he had for where to take the offense. Uh, how, how much do you think that, uh, you know, maybe has to gear down because you guys can't get on the field, can't go through it, and you're just doing it virtually? Uh, do, do, you, do you get a sense that, uh, you know, maybe everybody's just kind of bringing back what they did last year? Or can you actually expand if you guys can't get together and have a real practice? I, I think thinking that Coach Reed is just going to do whatever he did last year is really underestimating him. You know, he's going he's gonna to come up with some stuff. And from day one of the virtual workout, we kind of hit on what worked last year, what didn't work, and where we want to be as an offense next year. So uh, we're already in the process of learning new stuff. And, uh, and, and I think that's what makes Coach Reed such a great coach. All right. B.J. Kissel, you want to close us out? Sure. Larry, I just want to ask because – and just give you an opportunity to speak to, to Chiefs fans who want to make sure that, that you guys 
aren't complacent after winning the Super Bowl and that that desire to get back there and win another one uh, is still every bit as, you know, as important as it was the first time. Just, you know, what's your kind of mindset and what sense did you get from your teammates, both around the time of the parade and all that, uh, and just from speaking with them after um, lately, that 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 desire and that that fire to get back there and continue building this thing forward uh, is still there, there uh, alive and well. I mean, it go without saying, you know, we're, we're a great franchise, a great team, and we were able to accomplish great thing last year. Uh, and and the, the, the awesome thing is that we, we kind of keep the same core, same coaching staff, same player, and, and we're going to go do that thing one more time. And, and you know, yes, after, after the Super Bowl, there, there's the parade, there's like a bunch of uh, interview and, and festivity and opportunity. But for me personally, you know, after two weeks, I, I kind of took like a, a little bit of a break. I went on a, on a trip with my girlfriend and that was yes to take some time to chill, but also kind of like to regroup, focus, digest whatever happened, and now you know focus on next year, the 2020 season. And it's not a process that start uh, in the fall when training camp hits. It's something that start you know in March and February. And 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 uh, and yes, we went all the way through this year, but I, I think it just gave us like even uh, more kind of uh, will to 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 pursue that project of doing it one more time. 